On today's video, we're gonna review one of the website that you sent me and you're gonna learn from it. You're gonna avoid some mistake. It's gonna be interesting. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, what's up? So recently every week I've been doing on my Instagram um, weekly reviews of website and people have been sending in their website. So I wanna do some of them here on YouTube where I can go a little bit more in depth. So this is actually, I think it's a portfolio of one of uh, one of you guys, the, the subscribers who've been sending this. So this is the website of Jesse Sanchez, personal website portfolio. As you can see, he's a digital a designer branding from Los Angeles. Um, let's take a look at his website. First of all, I just wanna give kind of a first impression. Let's scroll down and then analyze what's going on here. So this is basically what you see when you land on the page. Then we're gonna scroll down, see some works, and then gonna get into the bottom here. Okay, so this was the first experience. Now I wanna analyze what I see here. So first of all, I'm personally I'm a sucker for using big text that sends some kind of a message, personal message. So I like that it starts with, hey, I'm a graphic designer with a mm, focus on digital and mm, branding currently based in Los Angeles, California. So there are images inside of the text, which is weird, I would say. You're not used to seeing that um, exactly like that. First time that I saw this, I was actually confused. I couldn't figure out exactly what you can see here. So I had to actually zoom in and say, hey, what what is this? Um, so I guess, I don't know if I'm wrong, but maybe this is Dieter Rums here. So maybe I'm a graph, I'm, and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to read this in context, like I'm a designer with a Dieter Rums focus on digital and timer branding. So this is a little bit confusing. I feel like there's a puzzle here which I should kind of crack or solve somehow and I'm not sure I'm doing a good job. So I feel like there is something really interesting here because first of all, there is pattern interrupt, right? I saw tons of designer websites and agency websites and even website that has a lot of texts on them, big bold text when you come in. But this is different just because he added those images inside. And the fact that it's different, the fact that there is kind of a puzzle that I need to crack, I think it's interesting. Obviously, I'm going to remember this website. It's going to make it memorable. Oh, it's the website with the guy who puts in photos of whatever Dieter Rums inside the text. In that sense, I think it's very, very clever and creative. Then again, if you're making some kind of a puzzle, ideally you'd want your viewers to end up feeling smart, like they could solve the puzzle. I'm not sure that's the case here because I don't know if I feel stupid or smart right now because I'm not sure that I've been able to understand the meaning of these images. Um, I can maybe understand Dieter Ram's focus. I don't understand why. Maybe he's doing speedy branding. Maybe he's doing it really fast. I'm not sure. And then photo of Los Angeles next to Los Angeles, there's no added value here. So I'm, I'm a little bit confused here. But again, interesting, maybe could have been done a little bit better. Now, next thing I wanna talk about is actually kind of the type, the type combination. Most of the website kind of looks like in a Helvetica type of bold sans serif, which I like, kind of, I don't know, brutalist feel to this website, grid is, very confused te texts overlying the images. It's pretty cool, I think. Um, but then there's this type, which is, I guess, condensed serif font, looks a little bit more magazine type of work. I'm not really sure how I feel about the combination between them. I mean, this, uh, you know, just this as a hero, I feel it's it looks okay, it looks good. But then maybe I'd wanna see this font here somewhere along the other pages or other, um, you know, parts of the website. I feel like the fact that it's, you never see this font again kind of lacks the feeling that it's weird showing up in the hero. One more thing, kind of in a, in a web development uh, aspect of this, as you can see, the fact that I can just move this around, this text is not real text. It's actually an image with those um, images inside, the icons inside, which I do not recommend you do this because then Google, unless you put alt tags on it, Google doesn't really know how to read this. So Google doesn't know who you are. And then it's it's kind of hurting you, hurting your, your SEO and your the searchability of your website. Now, I actually, I wanted to see how this was done. So I did inspect um, and I wanted to see if he, actually added 
some alt tags here and I don't see them. I do see though in the upload SSL that this is a Webflow website, which then basically I, you, with Webflow, you could actually, I think, add those images inside a real text. I would, I mean, it's possible to do that and it would be smarter to do, I guess, from development standpoint, but um, that's just something that you need to make sure that your website is, you know, built properly. Next thing I wanna say here is about this information button, which actually scrolls you down into the contact. I think information is not a good word just because just like the images, it leaves me more confused than with clarity about what is going to happen here. I would rather it would say contact information or something like that because information, it could be information about me, information about my work, information about whatever. I don't know, it's it's pretty vague. Information about what? Um, so you wanna be clear when, specifically when this is your call to action. It could be something like work with me, say hello, contact, whatever, but just information in general, I feel like it's a little bit confusing. I would use a different word. Now, when we go down here, um, it, when it comes to, I, I said that it's nice that the grid is broken and the layout is, you know, um, kind of like rearranged. Um, I like this, but then again, you you start seeing things like here you have view project and then this arrow, view project and the arrow, and then at some point is kind of breaks down. Oh, it's just here. Okay, so I something I, I thought this was maybe more of a pattern interact, but it bothered me that it, here it's, it's yeah, it's not a line. Um, when I'm going into the project themselves, I can see that this, this is a case study. I can see in small here that the client is self-initiated. I actually don't care and I, I say this a lot. I think that you guys can definitely put in self-initiated project in your portfolios and a lot of people may, might not even notice this. Um, but he, he did write kind of a brief for himself and shows the um, the way that he chose to design this kind of e-commerce fashion website. Um, at the end of it, there is actually a video where if you click it, you can actually see the interaction and how this works. I feel this is really is more helpful than actually seeing the just the images. I would actually put this on the top. If you've got something interactive, something that really shows motion and is a little bit more, I would actually put this on the top on autoplay. You don't have to click it, just it plays um, in the minute that you get in. I feel this would be uh, more impressive. I also, and I think I've said this before, seeing this kind of like this style guide with no context at all, to me, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, it means that you can do a style guide, but that's, who cares? That's not what the client wants. Nobody comes to you asking for a style guide. A style guide is just a tool to encapsulate the whole work that you did, you know, to make this clear for other people to work with in the future or for you to manage the work. But what people wanna see is actually how you solved the, the problem of maybe fashion e-commerce store. So start with that. I think this is not a good place to start. So I would switch them around actually. I would start with the video, finish with this kind of a style guide. Um, then we have we transfer. So something that annoys me, I can't click on this. I can only click here or here. So I would make this whole thing clickable because I want to click here. Um, yeah. So we transfer, by the way, I don't know if we transfer have a logo. We transfer logo. Because we transfer as a company that I know, yeah, I know, and I would probably recognize their logo. So I think it would be actually helpful to when you're working with big brands, and he worked with both We Transfer and Toshiba. I think it's really helpful to see the the logo that you immediately recognize. Oh, he worked with a famous brand. That really adds up to your kind of like social proof that big brands chose to work with you. And I think I initially clicked this and I, I, cause I didn't read this, it was too big. I was just like, oh, let's see what that is. And only when I went here to the client, we transfer, I was like, oh wow, he worked with we transfer. Um, so I would use the logo of famous companies when this is possible. Um, and so I guess this is an email campaign he did for them. I think this is, this is 
cool. I think this is good work and good design. I would think though about how I present this in a portfolio. You wanna think about art direction and how do you present this? Maybe just to make a better graphic and a better presentation, maybe you would see this in an email client. Maybe you would see this in some kind of an animation way. I don't, I don't know. I don't know the solution, but I would think, think always when you're presenting work um, in your portfolio, think about art direction. How do, can I make this more pretty to consume? Because we don't just want to see the end result. We want to see how you, you know, how you present it. Um, when it comes to the Toshiba and I click on it, all of a sudden I'm being directed into Toshiba's website to a totally different website. So I'm kind of lost here. I think, first of all, you lost me. You took me out of your website. So that's a big no-no. If you need to take me out of your website, do it in another tab so I'm not now lost and I have to get back into your website using the back button. So, But ideally, you would not want to me to get out of your website. Also, when I click here, not, not like this one where I get a little context about the project and what you did here, I do not know what was your role in the Toshiba. I mean, there's here digital design, wayfinding interaction, but I would love to see you present it in your own website with our direction, explaining, you know, again, your role here. Then we have another brand identity. I told you this, I find this kind of like annoying. So this is another branding agency. Then we have here some kind of MISC. What happens when I click this? So this is not clickable. I mean, I think before it was clickable. All right, so let's see the Heller beer case study. Um, so this is another self-initiated project, Heller beer inspired by the chill vibe of East Los Angeles where I live. Yeah, okay, so this is a pretty solid packaging design, I guess, brand design for a beer company. Um, what I like about the fact that um, Jesse here showed two personal projects is that he's kind of helping his potential clients know about his interests, what kind of project he would like to do. And even if he didn't have a chance yet to do them, he's kind of showing potential clients he'd like to work with maybe a brewery or maybe kind of a, like a drinks, food and drinks industry. And he gives them context to see how he would think about a project in this way. So I think there are some good things in this website. In general, I think there's some creativity going into this whole hero section, something that I didn't see before with the you know images inside the text. I actually also like this GIF of just mixed project that you do and we can see some you know also creative things which are not fitting into a specific project, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and also case studies, self-initiated work to so overall, Good work, Jesse. Some minor points for improvement, as I've mentioned, with the information, with at making this whole component real text. And but overall, I think it's a pretty good job. Good luck finding your next project. And I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you want your website to be uh, reviewed as well, make sure you follow on Instagram. And when I ask for, you know, I do this kind of weekly ask for links. Make sure you send your own link, and you can be reviewed as well. See you on the next video. Bye-bye.